it's Michael Whalen. I am the general manager and the head of ANR for Mindstream. And today we are talking to the newest member of the Mindstream family, uh, Michelle. Uh, you know, how do you say your last name? Qureshi. Qureshi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have had this conversation with people in Los Angeles at our offices and all over the place. How do you say your last name? So, and I'm like, and I want to say this for the record that I was right, Qureshi. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, Qureshi. And you know, you are, you are a new artist, but you are very established. You've done many records and you know, you've done a lot of things. Um, your new record within is coming up in September. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And Thank you know, you. and you and I have been talking about this now for almost a whole year, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the music and uh, I'm just so happy with how this has come out. Um, but since you are new to the sort of mainstream family, how would you like want to introduce yourself? Like tell people a little, maybe a little bit about your background and where you came from and who are you? Sure, who am I? Okay, I am someone uh, who, who loves music, who's very passionate about uh, my art and who has had a kind of a skewed path getting here to you and Mindstream. So I'm, I feel like uh, with the hard work, there's been luck too, because uh, it, that's definitely part of what you need. And um, background wise, I, uh, I started um, studying music like formally uh, after a few semesters in college, I changed and went to a conservatory. I had prior just been, you know, a teenage uh, guitarist who was just fascinated with the music of my time and the guitarists that, were anywhere from Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page, all the way to like Leo Kotke and some of the fingerstyle stuff, uh, the Wyndham Hill uh, guitarist, um, Ralph Towner. I know we both uh, really love Love uh, Ralph, love me some Ralph. Yeah, so all that was uh, kind of accumulated by me interest wise. But when I, um, once I hit college, I thought, wow, you know, I don't have that foundation. I don't have that really, uh, Western classical music uh, theory, how things go. It's great following your ears and that le lets you follow your heart, but but diving in and, and then saying, okay, you know, here I am 20 years old, but I'm going to be a classical guitarist. Uh, that was uh, kind of gutsy. <laughs> uh, most of the people you hear on the uh, uh, classical guitar circuit and stuff, they've been playing since three or five. And we mentioned ourselves, uh, in a conversation about Sharon Isbin and you know the backgrounds of these fabulous uh, classical guitarists. Um, so I took my training, I took my education, I went through, got my master's, and then uh, just my life itself was on a different path for a, few, a couple decades actually. <laughs> and um, when I came back to music, uh, what I found is that I really had this uh, this chance to kind of kind of really reference music in a uh, intuitive way because all that foundation was still there all that i had learned and built on technically the, the those parts were in place but there was some kind of thing that happened musically in that like that germination period you know like a like a long winter when spring arose and i started writing uh, my first album in 2012 and, and started self-releasing and and doing um the path that suddenly was available for indie musicians to have, you know, a home studio. Yep. Of course, mine didn't even resemble anything like this in, in the start. It was a Mac Mini that was uh, kind of crashing a lot and a very inexpensive guitar. Uh, my cousin gave me his um, uh, Stonebridge Furch guitar at the time, and then I became part of a, a Furch guitar family. And uh, things have just been, you know, constantly progressing. As you mentioned, uh, kind of uh, the previous albums that I have released, uh, and I, I heard you in an uh, interview um, very recently about how each album sets the bar higher. And uh, I, I do thank you for helping me set my highest bar with what we're going to release in September. Yeah, I, I, it's, I, I think a lot of uh, non-musicians, civilians, I think they think, okay, you put out a record and you must be so relieved, you must be so happy. And um, 
all I can hear is the mistakes. All I can hear is what I didn't do. All the, you know, like, you know, all of that Monday morning quarterback, you know, second guess. Yeah. Um, but um, I can tell you from my vantage that your new album is the best record you've ever done. It's a, it's beautiful. The writing right. is beautiful. The playing is beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's it's very interesting because you have so many little pieces, you know, and they're all like little two minute, little, you know, bite sized, two and a half minute bite sized pieces. Um, but what I love about the record is how beautifully when you listen to it from top to bottom, you don't have this experience of like a lot of pieces. You have this, it's almost like it's through composed, you know, and I, and, and, it, and so, so it's sequenced beautifully and has, it has a very, very nice sort of, um, Con, just sort of contour to it like you know it has a beginning middle and end but you know you have done ambient music with synthesizers see your keyboard behind you you've right. done guitar records you've done records with guitar and synthesizers mm -hmm. um this is just guitar um talk to me about your relationship to the guitar and then other forms of uh you know whether it's a keyboard or whatever and and how do you decide which way you're going to go it's sort of like in my world it's sort of like am i going to do a piano record or am i going to use my room here mm -hmm. so it, it's like um you know so like talk to me a little bit about the thought process you know but like sure. why why would you do an ambient record versus an all guitar record right well a lot of it just kind of in the past has just been a reflection of you know my imagination at that time i've never said ah oh, this this ought to be this or that ought to be that until this album um with with what i've brought up myself up to from this point it was looking at all these options and i think it's it's really hard because there's there's so to, you know to be disciplined enough to say and i got this advice from you um after i sent you part of the demo you know it's like it was just this very uh, almost improvisational feeling guitar pieces and and indeed you know i'll get back to that but to carry on with your question indeed some of it was um but at this point i felt like you were like look, you're, you play guitar beautifully, and this other stuff is also very nice, but that is the most unique voice I could seek out, is just like, what could I do in speaking just through my solo instrument? Yeah. How can I create the kind of worlds like that I did in Scattering Stars, where I had, you know, uh, as you say, virtual synths, different sounds, different instruments, flutes, and everything from uh, my studio, studio here. Um, so what what could I do by saying, all right, you know, look at every aspect of sound and just explore it. And one of my experiences was kind of that shift uh, I spoke of before where previous albums kind of felt like a, a painter, you know, painting and layering and doing this. But the physical aspect of, of what Within became was a very, very much like a sculpture. Yeah. You know, I felt more like I'm sculpting sounds with my hands. Um, I love, you know, the tone, you know, for a guitarist, it's just down to your nails and, yeah. and the shape of that day. And then those really esoteric kind of senses where that tone just pops out that it's just coming from your soul and you don't get to shape that, <laughs> but you can just keep it as pure as you can and, and let those sounds flow. Yeah, I mean, uh, you do have a very unique sound on the guitar. I, I mean, you know, I haven't heard all guitarists, but I've heard a whole bunch of great guitarists, and you have a very unique voice. So would you say the sound's in your hands? I think it flows through my hands. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Because it, 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 it's very expressive, and it's very unique. I mean, we were talking about Ralph Towner, who has a very unique, you know, nylon string sort of sound. And, you know, yeah. when you hear Ralph, you know it's Ralph. Um, uh -huh. I, when I hear you, I know it's you. And, uh -huh. like, my, my ear is becoming tuned to you. So mm -hmm. my question would be, what, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to kind of sort of conjure this question. Uh-huh. When you have an album like Within, 
does this does this feel like you've opened up something like this is going to be like your new pathway for a while or is like the next record going to be you know michelle's going to go back to her home studio and, and it's going to have like 15 instruments on it like like you know is because the, the problem with being as versatile as you are is that you know are you going to sort of walk a path or is this sort of like okay this is how i feel today and then in 2021 i might feel a different way <laughs> do we really know that <laughs> no. i mean you know for me like i did sacred spaces and i i can tell you just from my own experience that i i feel like i have a, a path and a direction for a while like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm developing a sound and sort it's of incredible a, yeah beautiful album by the way yeah I found it an aesthetic that i'm going to kind of play with for a while mm -hmm. yeah i definitely i mean we we, we finished the album but I continue to kind of keep that that ethos and that um, that feeling like the, and I would say it's just it's going deeper for me the kind of I'm paying much more attention to how it feels in my hands as I play it it's connecting um, the the physical aspect of playing to to the the pieces unlike I've really d done before I go back to short stories and sage and I play those pieces and I find changes I want to make because of this kind of new um, new relationship yes yeah. this, this deeper relationship and so I do suspect that you know I'm never going to be leaving guitar entirely right. um, but you do see my nice big uh, keyboard back here and my rolly tucked in the drawer <laughs> and um, for my own um, adventures i will certainly play in that but i'm not sure what we will hear next time as far as like uh sitting down seriously and and producing uh the next record um you mentioned some of your influences coming up and and but my influences change over time so mm -hmm. if you had to say right now in this moment who are your influences on guitar what would you say um, I like Pat Metheny a lot uh, and very versatile with the instrument and I don't even know that much about jazz per se but I wouldn't just call him a jazz guitarist and I think exactly when we start saying this kind you know like you met the new age kind of thing it's all not so relevant it's all more about marketing so being able to see a um, guitarist who can just make music not play the guitar but make music on the guitar that's usually what thrills me the most yeah, um, I, I, I'm thinking of his album uh, "One Quiet Night." You know where he, you know he you mentioned that to me. Yeah, yeah we, you know, the acoustic guitar, and he did. It's an album of covers, and some of the covers are just unbelievable. I mean, they're just they're just beautiful, and they go in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. So, and I love I love Pat Metheny, and I love how sort of cinematic his music is. You know, Indeed, like his yeah. new album is just. You know with the orchestra and it's just it's mm -hmm. gorgeous right. um, when you sit down to play mm -hmm. is it ever with the intention that you are just playing and writing to write or is it always like okay i'm gonna go write a piece for my next record i can say i've never sat down and to say i'm writing this for the next record Cool. I can say I sit down and I and I say there's stuff I don't know on this instrument. There's a lot of stuff, and then just kind of have that moment reveal something new to me. You know, that's one of the reasons it's fun with that harp guitar. You know, it's like uh, I don't have the intuition with those bass strings yet on the harp guitar. So it's a combination of like intellect and feeling when I'm playing it. You know, um, so I'm on have to be a little bit more on my toes, whereas on you know six strings. I feel a little bit more um, uh, familiar. This is another reason I love to do alternate tunings and throw those capos on all over the place. That uh, I really didn't know that that kind of playing was unique until you start getting the feedback and comments on on YouTube or Facebook. And like you said, like so I had had a comment recently from a guitar group where somebody says, you know, uh, it's really unique and it's really growing on me and I really like it. <laughs> you know, and I, I just feel a little naive sometimes about other guitar players like, oh, doesn't everybody, you know, know about 
partial capos and if you tune, retune your guitar then every relationship has changed and not only that the sonorities are different because a, a, a clamp a string that's clamped with a capo is going to ring differently than that open string of the same pitch you right. know it's it's just very very cool and fun to work with wow yeah that, that, that's cool um one of the things that i'm struck by is that there's not a lot of women guitarists you mentioned sharon has been Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's a few other people I can kind of think of, like maybe Muriel Anderson, and there's a few, few other people. There's not a lot of women sort of solo guitarists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so in a way, I mean, in the, at least to me, I think you're a pioneer. I mean, I think you're, you know, you're, 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 you're creating a pathway for younger women to kind of model after you. Like, do you see? things moving towards more women getting involved with this or like is, is there a trend here um i think i think like you can scroll through instagram and see um a lot more female guitars than say when i when i started studying um, um in the classical world I'm, I'm not really up to date with that but there's certainly you know it's certainly more um frequent to see female guitars, but still definitely a min, uh, minority, for sure. Um, in fact, an interesting story in the last couple years, um, among some uh, Facebook friends, there was, um, you know, these big playlists of these guitar friends and or acquaintances. Um, and one of the guitarists I met down at NAMM uh, a couple years ago, um, in Nashville. I've never gone to the big show, but the Nashville one, um, I met him and uh, he gathered up this big, big playlist of guitarists and posted it as a Spotify one. And um, I scrolled through it and scrolled through it and scrolled through it. And then I said, you know, would it be nice to, uh, you know, add my chromosome tight to this <laughs> song? Yeah. And that's how I got in this uh, uh, acoustic guitar cafe kind of group. Um, which uh, has a lot of guitarists and, and a few more females now, and that was uh, my chromosome. Step into hey. that, but it, yeah, yeah. There's there's an album title here someplace. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. Um, you, you and I have talked a lot about the mainstream ethos. So the idea that mainstream isn't about a style or a genre of music; it's about the listener. So like, what are they going to do with it? They're going to sleep, they're going to meditate, they're going to relax, they're going to focus on their schoolwork or their job. Uh, they may move to it, they may dance to it. So in your in your mind's eye, when someone's listening to with them, uh -huh. what are they doing to your record? As you mentioned, because of the kind of uh, brevity of the pieces, <clears throat> I would see it very nice for, you know, actually go ahead and take that, you know, that's long meditation of it and just kind of take those little journeys within yourself because that's you know time is suspended when you're listening to music anyways you know so you know expand on it in you know in a, a reclining position with uh, with your eyes closed and, and go where it will yeah. you know um and if if and make a little group of songs if you just want a 15 minute um kind of uh, uh, moment, but it, it's. I think my music's definitely geared toward the relaxation, um, not completely passive. Uh, even right. you know, with with all of it, not completely passive in the way that you know you will want to go somewhere. You know, and some of this kind of comes. I do uh, harmonic sound immersions as well, and that's you know this one hour meditation where people really. I just love hearing where their energy helps take me in this kind of mostly improvised performance and then they'll report you know where they have traveled you know so, cool. so pretty much of a yoga crowd generally has been and of course they've been suspended since uh, march you know I, I will be doing one at the end of this month so okay. that's kind of good news yeah, that's <laughs> that's great. great news <laughs> yes yeah. yeah, so I, I carry that um that kind of uh, mindfulness in my music just because it's in me, I think it's at my core. That's wonderful. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why mindstream and you kind of is a really, really good fit is because you're so naturally already kind of in the world of mindfulness. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, you know, and a lot of people have asked me, I don't understand, like, what's mindfulness? It's like, it's being aware of who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, you know, and I think you're a very aware person. You know, you're, you know, you're, you're sort of hyper aware of your music and, and who you are. So it's a, it's a great marriage. And, uh, you know, Within Us is such a beautiful record. Like, really, congratulations again. Right. Well, oh, thank you for the guidance and the, and the support and absolutely you know, the teamwork, literally, you know. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, and, uh, and our buddy Tom Eaton did such a beautiful job. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. They recorded it. And taking yeah. it to the next level, really, really nice. So, yeah. um, you know, so thank you for spending a couple of minutes and talking to us about the new record. Um, mm-hmm. so congratulations again, and, and thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks.